This episode of Bullet Heaven was made possible with a copy of the game provided by Einan Games. Way back in Series 4, we did this thing called the PC Tension, and during the course of its 10 episodes, one question sprung to mind. Between Fantastic Night Dreams Cotton's titular character and Magical Chase's Ripple, which witch was better? In the end, Magical Chase won the day, giving Ripple the edge, but to be honest, Cotton had way more personality, and even though it wasn't as fun at the time, Fantastic Night Dreams Cotton was still a very good game. Deceptively hard, sure, but very good nonetheless. It's been over 8 years since then, and 28 years since the release of Cotton for the PC Engine Super CD-ROM-ROM, -ROM, and yes, that's how it's pronounced. Success, Beep, and Einan Games have brought a whole new Cotton to modern consoles, kicking off a huge Cotton resurgence. And I gotta say, it's actually pretty dope. Fantastic Night Dreams Cotton Reboot, emphasis on that exclamation point, is a widescreen horizontal cutem up developed by Rocket Engine and published by Beep in Japan on February 25th, 2021. It was then published in the West by Einan Games on July 20th the same year. More than just a high-res reskin of a classic game, Cotton Reboot adds some excellent features to the mix and does so in a fun and intuitive way. Let's take a closer look. Cotton Reboot features a number of different modes, but the real meat and potatoes to this release is the arranged mode. Generally speaking, the gameplay in Cotton Reboot is very similar to the version we played on the Super CD-ROM-ROM, -ROM, but there's way more going on here than we saw in Series 4. Played in a side-scrolling manner, this time in a widescreen setting, players move Cotton about the screen at a decent rate using typical hard eight control, regardless of whether an analog stick, D-pad, or arcade stick is being used. Attacking is pretty intuitive this time around. Unlike the original, Cotton will shoot both her forward-firing main shots and arcing ground attacks through one single button and in a rapid manner. This very effectively frees up inputs to execute other important functions behind Cotton's offensive and defensive capabilities. Players will power up Cotton's main shots through experience, primarily through enemy destruction and collecting crystals. As players defeat various enemies, crystals will often be left behind which can be one of several colors. Yellow crystals will be the one players want for a healthy experience boost, and as Cotton's level increases, so too will her main shots. Her bomb shots are not dependent on level though, rather, special items are dropped from statues which, when collected, will give Cotton's bombs a little boost. There are even double bomb items that increase their power more quickly. Cotton's shots are all well and good and all, but she also has access to some powerful magic which can be collected and stored in the bottom right hand corner of the screen and deployed with the B button by default. A corresponding crystal needs to be obtained in order to use magic, and players will have access to the most recent spell collected. Just as in the first game, red crystals will allow Cotton to launch a flaming dragon at her enemies while blue ones will discharge a powerful lightning attack. The new green crystal will cause a massive landslide and purple crystals will launch an explosive arcing bomb at the player's opposition, which explodes on impact with an enemy or on the ground. Larger crystals will result in a more powerful spell, up to level 3. The bigger it is, the more powerful it gets. However, if all of Cotton's spell slots are occupied, collecting crystals the same color as the ones in the queue will boost their power with spells later down the line taking precedence. This could leave players with an arsenal of pure destruction for when the going gets tough. Cotton isn't going into battle alone either. Her companion, a fairy named Silk, will assist Cotton with powerful defensive capabilities as well as a more direct ranged physical attack. Up to six fairies can be collected and will fight right alongside Cotton as they are freed from statues throughout the game. They'll even often fly out and attack enemies autonomously, unless needed for a spell. Holding the B button rather than tapping it will cause Cotton's fairy companions to encircle her and, depending on the magic spell in the queue, will activate one of a number of interesting defensive techniques when the button is released. Blue will deploy a handy barrier, while red enables fire silk, just like in the original game. Both don't last forever though, so especially with the barriers, it's recommended to have one handy at all times. Additionally, releasing or pressing the shot button while they are in orbit will launch the fairies forward for a ranged physical attack. Green and purple magic also has intriguing effects, but we'll get into those in the scoring section. 
Taking all of this into consideration, Cotton's general control scheme works very well and comes off as quite a bit more effective and much less confusing than the Super CD-ROM ROM version from episode 66. Played over the course of seven stages, Cotton Reboot feels quite easy by comparison to the PC Engine version. It's not that difficult at all to make it all the way into stage 6 or 7 using just one credit, especially when taking advantage of Reboot's scoring system. Veterans will probably want to ratchet up the difficulty on this one. There were also a few bosses missing or changed around from what's present both here and included in the X68K version, compared to the Super CD-ROM ROM version, giving the game a much different flow even beyond the control situation. Speaking of the X68K version, its inclusion should give players a very good idea of the sort of gameplay found on PC Engine, though once again the controls found in this version are less complicated than those found on the Super CD-ROM ROM. It feels much better. Both games also play fluidly and smoothly on the Nintendo Switch, and while we haven't been able to get hands-on with the PlayStation 4 version, yet, it runs so well here that we doubt it will be much different at all on the PS4 side of things. And that's always a good thing. We love it when the Switch is able to get a competent, smooth-running version of the game. All in all, Cotton Reboot is a great return to a classic series, but while the core gameplay mechanics are fun enough, its scoring system is easily where the best parts of Cotton Reboot reside. Cotton Reboot really went wild with its scoring system, featuring an addictive, fresh system that really makes it stand out from anything released in recent memory, and maybe ever. Here's the idea behind it. When Cotton fires her main shots, they will change form as they strike and pass through any crystal that may be on the playfield. Her shots will change noticeably to a split green pattern, and any enemies hit or killed with these bullets will fill a gem gauge in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. When this gauge reaches 100%, the player can then press the X button to engage Fever Mode. By shooting through crystals in the same manner as charging the gauge, players can trigger a stream of green gems, each with a multiplier attached. Collecting many of these will increase the player's gem level, and in turn the multiplier attached to the gems earned to a maximum level of 5, and a value of 1024 per gem. Some enemy shots can also be cleared by way of split fire in this manner. This alone can really grow the player's score to a monstrous value. In a good run, players can amass over 100 million points by the end of Stage 1, complete with three very swift extends. Building up gem energy between uses can sometimes be a bit challenging depending on what enemies are present at the time, but using green fairy magic is a great way to refill the gauge in these sections. All enemies caught in its area of effect will be converted to crystals, allowing for the potential for shots to be converted to split fire over a wide area of the screen. The whole process comes with a bit of risk though. If shot too much, any one crystal can eventually change into a black crystal which will absorb any bullets that hit it. This will prevent them from being converted into split fire. These crystals are worth a decent amount though, growing to a maximum value of 300,000 points if they're shot enough. Players can even convert all of the crystals on screen to maximum value dark crystals for a huge bonus by way of purple fairy magic. Beyond these mechanics are a number of typical bonuses such as collecting experience points past maximum level, these flashing acorns from fairy statues, and hidden items like this mushroom here. Tea time also returns, though each teacup is worth considerably more in reboot. Dark teacups are worth 50,000 points apiece. A stage end bonus that can often tally in the millions is also added at the end of each area. A no-miss bonus can also be awarded worth a cool mill. Of course, the X68K version is much more basic, and identical more or less to the bonuses we saw in the Super CD ROM ROM version back in episode 66, and is decidedly less fun to score in. As such, Reboot is definitely the main draw here, especially considering the 2 and 5 minute caravan modes based entirely on the scoring in Reboot. Add to that online leaderboards for every mode and difficulty, and there's just a ton of replay to this one just on scoring alone. Updating a 28-year-old game's presentation can be challenging. Sometimes, the original art and sound assets, while good, aren't quite enough, and using smoothing filters or just chucking it all into a 3D engine can come off as cheap. I think we can agree that Cotton Reboot does things the right way, with high-quality redrawn art, high-detail 2D sprites, and great backgrounds, all of which maintain the personality and soul of the original. It looks great, but there are a couple of caveats. For one, the play area can get very busy, especially when Gem Fever is in play. 
This leads to another issue. Enemy shots can really get lost in the shuffle. Keeping a barrier in play as often as possible helps, and gem fever shots do a decent job of clearing a lot of enemy shots out of the way. But more often than we care to admit, one will sneak through, completely visually undetected. And it always seems to happen when our shield dissipates. One other minor issue is some of the backgrounds that feature rippling water. The images are static, and no appropriate animation makes them a little jarring. Not a real deal breaker, but it was kind of noticeable. On the audio side of things, Cotton Reboot does great things with its music, effects, and VO. Though not quite as driving as the Super CD-ROM-ROM -ROM version of the game, the reimagined arrangements in Reboot and the classic X68K sound set give both included versions personalities that make them worth playing, even if the Super CD-ROM-ROM -ROM version is all you've ever known. The sound balance is a little wonky by default though, with music often drowning out the voice scenes between stages. Speaking of which, the voice delivery here is pretty decent, though not quite as good as what was found in the Super CD-ROM-ROM -ROM version. As far as Cotton's plot goes, it's a little on the unexpected side. There's usually a sense of justice or a need to make things right with the characters involved in a lot of these kinds of games, but what gets the reluctant Cotton fired up? A chance at getting her favorite candy? A little bribery and a dash of trickery never hurt anyone, right? Rounding out the presentation is a clean HUD and easy to read and navigate menus. Interestingly, the only language support here is English and French. From what we understand, some languages including English were patched out of the Japanese release some time ago, and this release could be why. It's questionable, especially given that the PC Engine Super CD-ROM-ROM -ROM version actually had English language support and VO, making it leagues better than the North American TTI release. At any rate, while the Switch version lacks achievements, the PlayStation 4 version does sport a trophy set adding just a touch more replay to the mix for those playing on Sony's system. So, how does Cotton Reboot stack up? Let's take a look. The extra inputs available on the Switch controller make Cotton Reboot feel pretty good. The X68K version is also quite playable thanks to the expanded control compared to what we played on the Super CD-ROM-ROM. -ROM. Sporting three difficulties in Reboot and five in X68K, there's a sweet spot for players of all skill levels here. Reboot feels very manageable on normal, which could mean it's either just really easy or very well balanced. Either way, it's fun. Played over the course of seven stages, both Reboot and X68K last a good amount of time without overstaying their welcome. The addition of a 2 minute and 5 minute caravan mode and online scoring for everything really extends the replayability of the whole package, not to mention various unlockables. Overall, we really like the direction Cotton Reboot took with its visuals, though it can be very difficult to see some enemy shots when bonuses and crystals are littering the screen. But there are also some details like rippling water represented by way of static images that stuck out in less than great ways. We really like the soundtrack in both Reboot and 68K, but overall we prefer the Super CD-ROM-ROM -ROM version. Some of the sound balance in the story scenes is a little on the whack side. The classic sound effects for everything from shots to charging to item collection and more works very well though, and the VO is clear and well delivered. While 68K is basic cotton on every level, Reboot's amazing new scoring mechanics make it far and away better than the Super CD-ROM-ROM -ROM version we played all that time ago. It's absolutely awesome, and it has us pushing and optimizing our runs to squeeze as much out of the system as we can. With its moderate cost, Cotton Reboot's fun gameplay and competitive online score chasing still give it an excellent value. What a great way to build up hype for the releases of the Saturn Cotton and Guardian Forest Collection and the newly announced Cotton Rock and Roll. All we need now is some kind of reissue for Panorama Cotton and we'll really be set. But like, seriously, give us Panorama Cotton, let's go. I don't want to pay a thousand dollars for it. In the meantime though, Cotton Reboot really hits it out of the park. This one is definitely a must play for returning and new fans alike. Whether physical or digital, you really can't go wrong, and we've got a ton of links in the description below. Hey, I don't know if you've noticed, but like, July has been pretty wild for shooters, hasn't it? Well, we've got a special bullet heaven coming up that chronicles this absolutely nuts month for the genre, but until then, there's yet another big shooting game that we need to address, so long as we can get it in time. See you all in the next episode.